Something I've been offering in Chico for the last two years is the permaculture design certification training and that is a 72 hour international certification that follows a very specific curriculum and uh, what we do there is bring people through a whole entire journey where they learn about how to establish connections between elements, how to set them up in nature, how to actually go into designing and how to incorporate as many techniques and methods as possible while doing so and then people at the end get to work in groups with one another and actually design their own properties or their own dreamlands or any sustainable project or business that they've always wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> So permaculture is uh, basically is trying to do is mimic natural systems that are thriving and applying those systems that work so well into everything, into like our economy, the way that we set up our gardens, the way that we set up our water systems, uh, our education systems, our housing, and so pretty much everything. I've been teaching permaculture since 2008. And what I'm seeing over the last few years is that people within what we can call mainstream are more and more interested in it. And it's not so much anymore about the alternative crew that really want to be working with nature and learn about ecosystems and all of that. What I'm seeing more and more is people coming to the courses from different fields, like people that work on the health department or in hospitals or architects and I'm getting a lot of interest from other faculties and landscapers, people that want to help people set up their systems to be more resilient. A lot of landowners, people that just bought a piece of land and want to be able to be as self-sufficient as possible and really care for the earth at the same time. And a lot of people that are really interested in like social systems, how to build really resilient communities, people that want to go into leadership groups or do a lot of things like community gardens and so the last few years I see that the, there is a more diverse um, group and um, yeah and the more we move you know into into everybody just being more aware about climate change and all these things that it, they're really affecting us right now I feel like the more diversity the classes are gathering um, in permaculture anyway it's, it's all about diversity so we're not going to be thinking in our lifetime, we're going to be thinking how do I establish systems that will last for seven generations after me. That's a lot to be planning for, actually. Balance. Balance. That's a better word, balance. You had one in the tip of your tongue, uh, I saw you. Eco design. Right? Ecological design. Yeah. Very important. Regeneration. Right? Regeneration. Really important. I work with children and my goal is to start a permaculture-based preschool for children four and under uh, to really help get them in touch with nature, uh, teaching them the link between all living things and so they understand from a very early age their impact on the planet and everything that's around us. I'm interested in utilizing it in my life uh, on land and also with my friends and family and people that I want to network with in order to create um, a really healthy, vibrant, thriving culture in my community. You come in, you bring in the chickens, the chickens scratch everything, they aerate the soil, they manure everything, right? You put in some mulch, all of a sudden there's some soil structure being built. They're preparing the ground for everything else. And then you come and you throw a bunch of cover crop all over it because it already has structure to germinate and grab onto, right? That cover crop. So you water, the cover crop goes off in like three weeks and stabilizes everything and you fix this nitrogen right away. Soil is um, magic. It's a, it's a box that incredible things happen, right? But I want to stress, outside of all the obvious things, it's a solid, it's a three-phase system, right? It's got solid, liquid, and gas. All those things are interacting all the time. 
right? It takes up space. It has solids and has voids, right? And the voids are very important, right? Because that's where the water's held. That's where the gas is exchanged, right? Anything that's been openly pollinated for 50 years or plus is an heirloom seed. And if things are same genus yet different species, they most likely will not cross. I have been saving seeds myself for at least five years or so and on a, for farm scale intention, for reusing in a, I like biodynamic farming. And the ideal is that we create our farm individuality and one way to do that is creating seeds that have relationship to the land and the farmers and the other plants and animals in which they grow. The other thing I look for in perennials is I look for the old growth because perennials were there last year and I want to see the evidence that there was old growth that's still decomposing. So you guys over here are going to slowly move closer to them. So you can maybe take one step at a time, fill it out. Each time you get fill it, you take a step, kind of check in, like feel how it feels to be getting closer to the person with their eyes closed. <laughs> when I came to this workshop, I thought permaculture was just about agriculture, and I learned that it includes all systems within the community and, and within individuals' lives. And it's really a good tool for helping the community come together as a whole helping us get to a common purpose and a common goal so we can all live happily and sustainable. We're gonna put right there, next door to the massive mammoth <laughs> sunflower, we're gonna put the bean seeds, so they're gonna go like this. That should uh, work very well with my, my bodily system. There you go. Thank you, Enjoy. sir. Enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> I'm just really inspired right now by all of the values and the options for like ways of restoring the land and uh, creating really abundant, efficient gardens that we've learned about so far. And you mulch that thing, you know, that you chop it, you drop it on your pathway, and all of a sudden you bring in all those nutrients that the root system first took from the ground into the leaf system, is transformed into a really easy way of fixing nutrient back that's going to decompose in your pathway and feed your baits next door. The further that I develop and understand permaculture, uh, that I think it gives me the tools as well as the passion to further implement them in my own life. Each day has been just a huge download and full of so many aha moments and just making the connections between my own life, my own habits and my own, own property as well, and how to manage the systems and to implement that on a daily basis. So every bit of knowledge that I gain throughout the course, I'm constantly making connections to my own life, my own environment, our community, and seeing ways that we can make improvements and potentially, hopefully, very positively impact the future. I can start by being more careful with my uses of water producing more of my own food, growing plants together in a way that is beneficial to biodiversity, and living a life that's more gracious and compatible with other people and organisms, and that alone will make a great effect. So make sure that you're only going on the bit, because now we really have to see the bit. <laughs> The dreaming is almost uncontrollable at this point. I look around and I can't believe the lack of diversity around me. But I don't get angry, I don't get you know, disturbed about it because I, I now have the tools that I know and I have the confidence that you know, this can all change and uh, the potential here in this area is limitless in what we can do. And, creating a beautiful, self-sustaining landscape that benefits everybody and everything living on this planet. We actually found out that there's a really big basement that stays cool and doesn't allow in light, so we're going to do mushroom cultivation down there. 
then we extend out further into our zone one where we have our herbs, veggies, annual vegetable crops that we're going to have to give a lot of care to and we have the riparian area that's going to bring in a lot of water and a lot of diverse species into pretty much all our zones. Our project is an, uh, designing an eco-village and we are using the Chico State Farm field area here where we have been for the last 10 days. Here we live. So these are our houses. They are round houses. And there are five houses we put so they can be families or individual people or um, guests. We have a guest house here. We have sunflowers all along the edge and then with cucumbers growing up in those because they're really happy together. They're good companion plants. And then we have the three sisters out here along this border, which is the corn and the squash and the beans. Over here we're growing hemp, which we'll be using for, I mean, we could even be making bricks to make buildings with it. You know, it's pretty intensive to use, but it seems like a really valuable crop to have on property because we can use it for just about anything, so. And then up here, this is part of zone two, we have a blacksmithing area and our tools that we can store outside. And in this area in zone two, we got our animals, so everything kind of flows together. Like we got our tools right here, our animals right here, so we can bring them out into whatever pasture we want. They're kind of in between all three. So like if zone one, if we don't, if we don't really worry about zone one, we want them to come through and clear it out for us. We can just move them over to that. And uh, we're planning on using a lot of natural borders, like uh, shrubs and stuff instead of fences. I see a lot of energy flows, which is awesome. And I yeah. see high productive areas and when I look at zone one and I look at zone two and I look at zone three, I definitely want to be a pollinator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like really. <laughs> Just I still remember how impacting it was for me to receive all of these solutions and knowledge and design work and options and understand about how everything connects to everything. And it was such an eye opener that it's not something that we should keep to ourselves. It's not a knowledge that it should be kept for just one person. It needs to be shared with the world because everybody is part of this ecosystem. Everybody is part of Earth. We need to walk this path together. And I also believe that you have to do whatever it is that you're really good at in this life. So when I wake up in the morning and I think about what is it that it makes me feel stoked, and he, and he puts me into a thriving state. I think about permaculture. <laughs> I think about hearing how can I help others to set up their systems and their dreamlands. I think about how can I pass on my skills. I think about how can I teach design techniques so people can be super resilient and uh, feel really empowered to move forward in a more sustainable way. So. When I wake up in the morning, all I think about is permaculture, so that's why I do it. <laughs> well, Rosa is a very inspiring, incredible human being, just really has a way of connecting um, her ideas and ambitions um, and really passing them along to you and igniting your own fire. I love Rosa very much as a teacher. I think she's astounding. She's full of energy. She has so much passion that's just tangible throughout the group. The way that she interacts with the students, the way that she interacts with nature, it really is leading by example as far as helping get us all fired up. Really excited about all of these wonderful things that we're learning and all of the changes we're going to implement. And it's really empowering. You know, she's a very empowering teacher as far as bringing all of this knowledge to us, really helping us drive it home and make the connections of implementing that in our own lives. I grew up in a family that already has a lot of agricultural and ranching background. And so I grew up seeing my grandparents and my parents and all my uncles and just everybody in my family really working with land systems and with one another. And and then I started traveling in my early 20s, and um, the reason why I wanted to travel is because I wanted to understand more cultures on the earth, and I wanted to understand different climates and different, different places. And I was curious to, to just know more about the earth in general. And um, this is when I started learning about permaculture. 
<laughs> I first started teaching in Bali, Indonesia. Then I kept teaching in Europe, so I've been teaching in places like Spain and England. And then I came here. So for the last five years, I've been teaching permaculture in Chico. And um, yeah, that's a really beautiful thing because you get to see people transforming along the course and coming out the other end, really getting a really big picture of what permaculture can do to the planet and all the solutions that brings onto the table and how do they relate with one another and, and to themselves. And, in, and so in this process, people feel really empowered and, and one step closer to be ready towards action. Before I took this class, I uh, really didn't have too much hope in the future. With everything that's going on, it didn't seem like we had the tools to come back from that. But now with micro-restoration and holistic land management, on building soil and proper land restoration techniques and rainwater harvesting. It gives us the tools and the hope and uh, an opportunity to succeed in the future and make a difference in this world. I guess the biggest thing this class has done for me is just made me aware of how to incorporate all these different elements together and tie them, unite them to create one holistic system, one whole piece, and a one closed loop system. To me that's just so, so beautiful and inspiring. It just makes me want to go get busy and make change right now just like she's doing. <laughs>